My name is Victor Marquez. I'm Deco Network Sales and Marketing Manager. And with us today is our Deco Pro expert, Zach Dewhurst. As a Deco Pro consultant, Zach uses his 10 plus years of experience to help other custom decorating businesses become more efficient and profitable through the implementation of Deco Network and custom tailored strategies. Feel free to write us your question in the chat uh, within the webinar system and we'll be uh, able to read your question and answer them here for you live. All right, how to reach a wider audience during your downtime. I'm gonna keep this a little rather short and sweet. Um, we're gonna go over a lot of concepts and I wanna leave it more up to Q&A and have a, kind of a discussion. All right, so we're gonna just kind of go over to this PowerPoint and touch base what we're gonna talk about. Uh, first, search engine optimization. Uh, how do we make Google and other search engines like us and improve our search results when a keyword or phrase is put into a search engine? So we're going to talk a little bit about local SEO, custom product pages within a Deco Network website, and how you can uh, essentially improve your SEO through um, just working hard. Uh, meta page descriptions um, and, and how they all work within Deco. Deco and again blogging. Then we're going to talk a little bit about websites and how you can diversify your business. Um, we have different ways we can do that through uh, retail niche websites, affiliate website templates, uh, website recruitment tools, and we'll go through those different ones. And then lastly, we're going to talk about uh, the different types of products you can uh, organize and work on within Deco Network and uh, some different artwork uh, concepts to keep yourself busy. So what we're trying to do is build long-term assets that you can take advantage of within Deco Network software for now and years to come. Deco Network is game-changing software. It is extremely powerful. It is extremely robust. The more you learn how to utilize it, the more you'll mold your business around it and grow your business. One of the great things about Deco Network, if you're on the premium or the enterprise plans, is you have 500 or unlimited amount of websites that have a lot of potential. If you take the time to create a strategy on how to maximize their potential, you can really start creating some new different ways of bringing in income and keep yourself busy even during crazy times like this. So, first, let's come to our web, let's come to just a website. So this is just a sample site that I have within Deco. And what I wanna talk about is on-page SEO and how what we can do on our websites to improve our search engine uh, rankings. So if we were to go to Google, and we search for custom shirts. A lot of you probably know what I'm gonna talk about. Some of you may not. So let's, let's go over this 101. At the top here, we have ads. On the side here, we have ads. People are paying to be uh, displayed here. And Google is telling us, hey, this is either sponsored or again, these are ads. Um, when you click on this link, custom ink in this case, and so the one paying for this, they are either paying a cost per click. So every time we cl click on that, a customer clicks on it, custom ink just got charged by Google, or it's cost per impression, where for like a thousand times to be listed here at the top, custom ink is paying Google uh, a price for that. Um, the cost per click or impression comes down to how competitive the keyword search is. Custom shirts, it's a fair um, uh, essential, again, I can't tell you exactly right off the top of my head, but you're probably, to be right here, you might cost $3 every time I click customink.com. Now, does that mean I can just keep, keep, keep clicking customink.com and keep getting them to, you know, keep charging them? No, <laughs> that's what cookies and things are for. Uh, if I've been here, I can't just keep uh, running up the tab for custom ink. Uh, 
essentially they're going to get hit for that first time. And then after a period of time, if I come back, I can get them again. <laughs> what we have here, um, this is called, when I put in custom shirts, we have these descriptions coming up. And if, and if you notice, they have different descriptions for different pages. If I click on this custom t-shirts page, it's actually taking me still to their homepage. That's unique. Design yours today is probably still taking me to their home. No, this takes me to their design tool. So what you have, every page that you have is an opportunity to hit keywords in the title and in the description. So whether you're paying to be listed up here or whether you are organically being listed down here in your local results, you want to take care of what is called the meta page description. Before I go into how to do that per page, I want you to realize you can come into SEO tools of your site, keyword and metadata, and you can set the default description and keywords. These keywords used to be a lot more important than they are. Descriptions are have a lot more uh, weight nowadays. Again, if I Google custom shirts, you see in the description what's being highlighted a part of my search. Well, this is their description, and as I put in that phrase, it's coming up. So if you're going to, I don't want to say be lazy, that's, the, that's not what I'm implying, but do not assume your website is, if you build it, they will come. It is not the field of dreams. You must build a site and then make sure that search engines know that it exists. If you rely on Deco just to automate all that for you, you're not going to get the best results. You need to take the time to create meta keywords and descriptions. Now, again, this is just for the default. When you come into the actual website pages, and then if you click on an individual page, okay, so right now we're on the home page, and I come to advanced settings. I can come over here to meta tags and I can override the, just the, the default keywords and descriptions that I just showed you. So right here is where I could be talking about, we offer um, custom t-shirts, sweatshirts, and more in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and again, I don't have to put that. Um, no minimum custom banners, posters, and apparel. I'm not pretending to be an SEO expert. I do have a marketing degree from The Ohio State University, but uh, as far as writing a really good meta description, ironically, what I suggest doing is Googling how to write a meta description. And there are a lot of great articles that will teach you how to write that proper description. Again, my job is not to claim to be an expert at that. I want to show you how to talk or look at an expert. And again, this is what a SEO firm will often do for you. When it comes to writing these meta descriptions, one thing I would do is I would actually open up, um, I'm a big fan of Google Drive. So if I were you guys, um, or you can use Excel, but create a new spreadsheet and list all your pages and then write your descriptions. It's a good idea to have all this information outside of uh, Deco. So already organize all of it here in, an, in a CSV sheet and then copy the actual descriptions and keywords over here. Um, you wanna have that hard work stored somewhere else. So again, that's the home page. We also, so when I Googled custom shirts, 
this right here, this is going to be linked to their home page. This is their meta description. Okay. On their design tool, this is their meta description. So use our designs or upload your own with low. I mean, it's a good description. It's not so much for hitting the, the keyword search. Um, you know, if we wanted to hit, you know, design from scratch or custom design tool uh, and all of that, we could go into the designer, advanced settings, meta tags, and then again, you know, talk about, um, look, design custom shirts from scratch, you know, and, and, and hit whatever keywords and, and make sure it's still relevant. This should only be one to two sentences long. It's not a paragraph uh, of, of a bunch of stuff. The meta keywords themselves are going to be separated by values. So in this case, um, and they're, they're, they're also not just keywords, they're phrases. Um, one thing we can do here is upload from Facebook. Um, and you, because if you're logged into Facebook or Instagram uh, and you're in the design tool, you can upload from there. I'm not saying that's the keyword that we really want to hit. Uh, these keywords used to have, again, a lot more relevancy. The descriptions are much more important. So if I were you, I would go through all of your core pages and absolutely write the meta descriptions and hit some of the keywords and, and improve, you know, make your, it, the more unique content Google has to crawl, the, the better you're off you're going to be. Now, I also want you to realize that these meta descriptions and keywords are actually all over the place in Deco. If you come to a blank product, for example, you do not need to go to this extreme and update them. But any time that we have a product, the name of the product, Mine takes a second. I've got thousands of products. Okay. So the name of the product, the code, and the description. Deco takes all of that, and down here in the meta information, it's all being hit. Now, th the thing is, we all have the same products. So don't think that Google's going to see this stuff as different. What this meta, where the keywords often really come into play, at least with this stuff, is when your customer is using the search tool on your website, those meta keywords are coming into play, okay? So the blank products, I don't think you're gonna really, it's gonna help you to do a whole lot there. Decorated products are a different situation. So after we take a blank and we add artwork to it, and for example, I just have this example T-shirt, once we made a pre-decorated product, this is a unique retail product. This is no longer, you know, the, the Gildan 5000. This is whatever design it is. What I can do is come into the meta information and override the title, the keywords, and description. This product is unique, and you've got a better chance at it having uh, the chance of being found. If I talk about, if this is unique to you know, um, an event and so forth. I want, I do want a page that talks about it, but if I put some keywords and descriptions here, it is gonna potentially help from an SEO standpoint. Remember this about search engine optimization. This is probably the biggest thing to take away. Search engines like Google change their algorithms incredibly often. We're talking weekly. There is no way to keep up with it to the perfection. Even if you hire a marketing firm, they cannot keep up with, they will keep up with it as much as possible, but everything changes. One of the biggest things that changed a few years ago, when you put in custom shirts, every listing on this page and the next several pages would all be Spreadshirt, Zazzle, Cafe Press, Custom Inc., only the massive, massive shops that service the entire country. Um, they were always at the top. 
what changed a few years ago? Local search results. Google now, a lot, you know, after the people pay, the first results are not, is not Custom Inc. anymore. I mean, you might think it is, but they're paying up here, right? And you can pay to be up here, um, but it's more or less a lot more um, local to your area. Um, and, and people want to buy local. Shirts are expensive to ship. Unless I'm buying a one-off, um, I would much rather have a bulk order um, purchased from someone local. That, that's just more common. So, um, which brings me to a, my, my next point local about local SEO. Google, um, how I kind of remember it evolving. A, several years ago, Google had Google My Business, and or not Google My Business, I'm sorry, Google Plus. And Google Plus was their attempt at competing with um, essentially Facebook and Twitter and so forth, and it, it did not go anywhere. It kind of evolved into Google Hangouts and a few other things, but before they knew it, they created kind of a place for a business to create a in a, in a way, a Facebook profile, if that makes sense. Um, so what it kind of evolved around was Google My Business. And if you're not on Google My Business, I highly, it's free, take advantage of it. Uh, Google My Business is how you're, you're gonna be listed here. Um, and you're, the more reviews you have and everything else, the higher Google's gonna rank your uh, website. So come to Google My Business, um, create an account if you don't already have one. If you already have one, look into how you can improve upon it. Are, is all of your information relevant? Is it all up to date? Uh, if you're gonna be found on search engines, um, really Google, uh, you've gotta be on Google My Business. And it's free, They're, I mean, why not? Again, a couple other Google tools uh, that I've kind of touched on and, and want you to realize if you want to pay to be at the top, you need to come to Google AdWords. Uh, one thing you can do on Google AdWords is you can start to figure out what keywords do you need to hit. So I would create a Google AdWords account. Um, you, de you don't necessarily have to use Google AdWords. There's different ways you can um, find the right keywords, but if you look at AdWords, it's gonna help you determine what phrases and keywords are being searched by your customers and what are you trying to hit in the descriptions themselves. Um, every niche is different, uh, you know, every target market is different. So um, by creating a Google AdWords account, you can learn more about the keywords and phrases you want to target. All right, and one more tool to use is Google Analytics. Google Analytics is free, and it what you do is you're plugging it in with your website. And I'm, I'll be honest, I haven't logged into Google Analytics in forever. Um, I have too many sites to think about. Google Analytics, though, um, will tell you everything ab about your audience that is coming to your site. How long are they staying on the site on the on each page? What is the bounce rate? Um, you can learn from your customers' past experiences. Um, you know, just watching their behavior on the site and, and um, make changes to the site from there. You know, if they go from your home page to the products page and then they leave immediately, there might be something wrong. Um, there might not be something wrong, but again, you can learn from um, your customers' uh, interactions, and Google Analytics is going to be the best way to do that. If we come to the admin of your site and we come into SEO tools, again, we came into keywords and metadata. Geolocation. This is definitely something you're going to want. You want the geo uh, meta tags to your website. That's going to, again, um, when you create your Google My Business account, you're going to put in your location. You're going to say, this is my epicenter. And then you're going to target a radius amount of customers. You're going to say, okay, um, everybody within 15 square miles is my target market. 
and that's who you're competing with. Um, for example, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, and Columbus is not a big city. We're, I mean, we're, we are like the, I don't even know, I'm not even going to try uh, to guess, but um, we have around a million people within and they right around the outer belt uh, and suburbs. My point being is my competition is not all of Columbus. I'm, I'm located right here. If, if it takes someone 45 minutes to come drive and pick up the shirts, I mean, I don't think it's really worth it. There's a lot of different shops around. My point is realize you're, you have a primary market, a secondary market, and you have direct competition and indirect competition. Your direct competitors are the ones really close to you. Your indirect competitors, I would argue, is everyone else and Custom Inc. Um, but again, focus on your area. Um, you do not, if, if you're in a big city, you, you're not going after the whole city. Um, yeah. Google Analytics. So if you um, sign up for Google Analytics, you're going to get a code. And in order for your website to connect with analytics and be able to talk with one another, you put the code here. Again, it's free. You might as well do it. There's no reason not to. Conversion tracking. If you end up paying, to advertise on Google. So if I come back to you know my custom shirts, if I'm up here and I'm running this ad through Google AdWords, well, I want to put in my tracking ID so I can see how effective my ads are. If um, if they are effective, then my ROI is good. If they aren't really producing the results that the um, frequency that I'm expecting, then my ROI is not there and I need to make a change or, or stop running the ads. Lastly, Facebook pixels. Facebook pixels are a lot like the Google AdWord conversion tracking. Um, if you're going to run an ad, you want to be able to track it so you can see your ROI. Okay, let's come back to website pages. When it comes to when Deco released version eight a couple years ago, and we went to this drag and drop, what you see is what you get editing system, everything changed. And what Google, or not Google, what Deco has also done is when, when I build a site, realize I primarily build a home page, and I, we do a couple other pages, but at the end of the day, Deco has built fantastic application tools. The way I describe it is Deco has built a bunch of really powerful tools that allows a customer to find a product and then do something with it. That's what makes money. Talking about custom shirts and custom printing, it's great, but it's not what makes money. What makes money is someone finding a product and then requesting a quote or making a purchase. And what Deco has done is they've built great tools. Again, so one, we can list blank products very easily, or I can list blank product. I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Uh, instead of a blank product listing, I can do a blank product categories and just drop it here and I can choose whatever category I want. So let's just do apparel printing. I'm going to preview it. So we built, they built this category widget, for example, and it makes it very easy to display the different categories for your customer to, to you know, then choose the specific product. So I have t-shirts. Well, I click on the t-shirts. It actually takes me to the products page um, where all the t-shirts are. It, it's easier to navigate than it used to be. Um, but when we're actually on the products page, sorry, I didn't already have this up for you guys. Uh, Deco built the filtration tool. So the filtration tool is a game changer. I mean, it's the most powerful widget and in, in, on the websites, in my opinion. So if we come over to widgets, Blank product filter, drop it right here. Okay, the filter tool, it, it, it changed everything. So 
again, if I come back to the home page and I click on this T-shirts, it's already selecting the rank category and subcategory. And now I'm on T-shirts. Well, I only want to see red and I, it has to go up to 4X and um, it can't be more expensive than that. I mean, this filter tool is a game changer. It is really great for your customer to find the right product they're looking for. Google does not care about this product filter tool. Google does not care that we have an awesome design tool for creating a product from scratch. They don't care that we have two quoting tools. The way I like to look at it is Deco has built a bunch of applications. You, most of your site's content revolves around displaying a product, and then after they select the product, they're gonna either filter it down they're going to request a quote using this, or they're gonna get a quick quote, or they're gonna use the design tool. These pages, you don't really do anything to them. The, the content is already there, it's a tool. Those tools make it easier on your customer, but again, it doesn't do a lot from a search engine standpoint. Right now, we have one page to allow our customer to sort through potentially thousands of products. And that is great from, again, the customer standpoint. But how do we make it so that Google still likes us? Well, there's no reason we can't create pages and make them for Google and not necessarily for the customer, but if they come there, no harm, no foul. So, for example, T-shirts. I'm going to create a t-shirts page and I'm not going to show it in menu. Click save. And what I want to do is I want to build a page real quick that's relevant. So hang on with me. All right, we're going to do a page title up top. I'm going to center this. I'm going to come into design. I'm going to make it 24. I like my line height at 1.5. We're going to go 600. I'm going to decrease this. Um, I'm going to show you guys a little trick because I think I have. Oh, do I have it handy? Let's see if I have it handy. If I don't. Oh. We won't, we won't get into that. Let's do a background color. Something like that. Let's come in here. Let's make this white. All right, I wanna get this right the first time because we're about to go on a cloning frenzy. So get your page title the way you like it. In this main column, I'm gonna come into widgets. We have the blank product listing and blank product categories. We want the blank product listing. I'm gonna drag it over here. And this listing tool, when you are on the uh, product page, this is the listing tool, but you cannot list categories as tabs. You cannot do it. And, and the reason, it makes a lot of sense because the filter tool would it cannibalizes it. So if we display categories as tabs, I can then choose what categories I want to display. So I have t-shirts, I have subcategories within t-shirts. So I'm gonna do good, okay, add, better, okay, best, Long sleeve. Performance, and we'll go with that. I'm gonna delete the all products. I'm also gonna save this before I lose any work. All right, so I'm gonna click okay real quick. These are your tabs. These tabs 
are simply awesome because I don't care what type of device you're on, this sorts your products extremely well. And if I go to preview, there is no page that has the ability to load at this speed. I mean, it is so fast. It is responsive. I don't care how big it is. I mean, it is awesome. Again, Deco's built great tools. This page is going to serve two purposes, but primarily be built for a search engine. That's what I care about. It's bothering me that our background's not actual white. All right, that's better. Right, I'm gonna come back to my tab. And we probably don't need to go over all of this, but let's throw the name above. If you're ever wondering why one line, see this is two lines. Well, one, make it 1.5 gives it better space. And if you want this line to be the same line as that, as far as height, take this number, multiply it by this number, 12 times 1.5 is 18, times how many lines you wanna average. I wanna average two lines. Well, that would mean we need to be 18 times two is 36. Everything is now on one line. Or I could choose just not to wrap everything and we could leave it uh, where it was. We'll just do that. The colors and all of that, totally up to you. I'm gonna show the prices below. Um, don't have to do a whole lot more. Category tab, um, I like to use the hover. So right now we have all of these. If I go to category tabs, edit active, <coughs> background. It's too dark, it's still too dark. Something like that. And as we're hovering, let's make the background, let's just find a nice red. I'll just do 200. Boom, it's helpful. What I also want you to realize is I'm not a fan, actually, and I'm I'm almost against it, but I don't want to say completely. You do not want to be adding a bunch of custom CSS and HTML. Deco has built the widgets. If you learn how to push the widgets, you can do virtually anything that used to have to be custom coded. Um, you know, right now I've got a bunch of different background colors and all of this. Um, let me come, I want to go 250. I'm gonna make the background for those actual products white. Uh, I don't even want a border. The panel design, that's the whole thing. That's why this background color is this. Now it's white. I'm gonna box the whole thing. And we're gonna line it center, space it large. If you're wondering how I know how to do this, I've done it hundreds of times. Okay, you wanna get this right the first time because what I'm about to show you is, and I've done this before in a different webinar, it's a cloning game. Now that I have t-shirts, um, I'm just gonna clone this and I'm gonna make it good. Just because I name a page, for example, good, and I that doesn't mean that's gonna be the keyword that we're actually gonna be hitting. Um, I'll show you in a second. I'm gonna then copy good. We're gonna make it better. T-shirts and good, it's gonna be the default category. So what I mean by that is when we're using this category tabs, this order is left or right and whatever's at the top is the default. On the t-shirts, we're gonna be good. On the good, we're gonna be good. On the better, we're gonna change that to be the default. <clears throat> Look at it this way. What harm do you have displaying these tabs at the top and making it super easy to navigate at any point? There, if you're on a phone, you don't see any categories or subcategories, but if you see this and we're on the t-shirts, it, it makes a lot of sense. 
There's no reason not to. Otherwise, you can, you don't have to display categories tabs. You could just change the category. There's nothing saying cloning is what I'm really trying to get across. You get the layout right the first time, and every time it looks beautiful. Um, you don't get it right from the beginning. You're going to keep going back and ripping out your hair. Um, now, again, I don't want the word good to be, that's not what we're going to be searching, your customers are searching for. And again, we're doing this for Google. Why are we doing it? Well, because one, on this specific page, I can add text and I could talk about, you know, um, um, on a budget, we offer a range of low price custom t-shirts and blah, 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 blah. Google will crawl meta, but they're also crawling the pages themselves. The more content you have on the pages that is original and unique, the better chance you have to rank higher. Again, am I saying this is going to be the, the key to success? No. Um, do, will it have value for now and years? Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's nothing wrong with having more content will create value. But again, if I come to advanced settings, I do uh, meta tags. Good is not my goal here. Um, you know, custom value t-shirts. That's the title I'm going for. Can again hit the uh, keywords, the value, and all of that. Um, and again, hit the description. So, the filter tool. The filter tool is awesome for our customers. It it will allow your customer to find whatever product they're looking for. Again, I'm going to come just back to my home page. I'm going to click on a product category, and it's going to take me to the product page. I've got a sweatshirt this time. I mean, it, it, it works too well, but um, right now, this page is not shown in the menu. It is on. Google will find it. If it came down to it, I could always create a page with a bunch of links as well uh, for all of them. So if I go to preview, this is on page t-shirts good. Look how, and Deco's really done a great job here. Look how easy that is of a URL. So I'm gonna come back to where I was. At any, if your customer does stumble upon this page, cause it's still live. I mean, there's nothing saying it's not there. This still absolutely serves a purpose to your customer, but we're making it for Google more or less. So um, let's come back to a presentation. Talked about local SEO, talked about custom product pages, talked about meta page descriptions. Let's talk a little bit about blogging. Blogging is pretty much exactly in the same lines as what I'm talking about here with these different products. And again, if um, I'm looking at my product filter, every single category, so in this case, so if I come to customizable products and my apparel, I should have one for all of my different categories and a page for all of my subcategories. I'm trying to hit custom long sleeve shirts. I, I should have a one page specifically that talks about custom long sleeve shirts. There's nothing saying that, you know, Deco's not limiting us on how many pages we can have. It, it's really, you know, create some pages, content. All right, blogging. So if, I'm just gonna actually uh, copy a page. The reason I'm gonna copy the page is I like my header layout and I don't wanna to have to recreate it. Take it out of there. Delete this. Okay. Come back up. I'm gonna do two columns. So when people think about blogging, we think about something like WordPress, which is a continuous feed. You don't write a blog for your customers, you write it for Google. Your customers do not care about the latest and greatest printing techniques, they really don't. I mean, you can talk about water base and discharge and it's awesome, but we like it in the industry. Your customers just care about the quality, the price and the service they're getting. 
they, they like to keep it simple. Um, some of your businesses, you know, they like to learn, but again, your blog can hit a lot of different topics and keywords and, and so forth. Um, but you're typically not going to write it for your um, customers. You're going to write it again more for a search engine. If I come over to widgets, um, I'm just going to show you how you often would want to do a blog as far as um, the layout. So let's say we have a ton of text and you know, imagine it's all the way across the page. When you have a blog, you often wanna list all your blog articles that are you have available. If you come into widgets, we have this tool list of links, bring it over here and I can make it a sibling pages now, if I'm on the blog page itself, I want to actually make it the uh, descending pages. So all the pages below will be here. Now, I don't have any pages below. So let's just come here. Let's copy blog one. Sorry, let's make it article one. Okay, drag it underneath there. Okay, so within article one, instead of using descending, we're actually gonna do sibling. And believe it or not, we don't have any sibling pages at the moment. We're gonna also show the current page, which is article one. I'm gonna click save. What I'm also trying to demonstrate to you is the power of cloning and, and everything else. Because if I keep cloning, when, when you write a new article, you want it to have a similar layout as another. So the ability to copy a page is very powerful. Uh oh, and I got this configured a little different. Um, come to the design. Every time I add a page, it gets added to the list of links. Now, I need the links to be vertical. I want them running down the page like a left-hand navigation. I also, um, I can change the hover, but I also want the active one to stand out so we at least know what page we're on. I'm just gonna give it a red right now. Now I'm gonna come back to the article. The article want, now see this is again, cloning's great, but if you don't get it right from the beginning, you got to go back and you have to redo what you did and you run the uh, risk of not having the continuity. But what I want to, uh, my, my point here is with your blog articles though, if I keep copying articles, so I'm going to copy, I'm going to make article three. That list of links is current, it's live. It's, it's a live uh, widget if you really look at it because I can come back up to article one and it's going to show article three as a link and if I click on article three I can get there so while while deco may not have a true feed in the sense my main blog page could have multiple articles and images and then once I get on an actual article, I could list all of the articles in the left-hand navigation. It feels more like a traditional blog. Again, why would you blog? Well, it's more opportunity to show deck, uh, I'm sorry, Google and other search engines, uh, what makes you different. Um, they, again, there you have competition. All of you wanna be at the first and the top here. If you use Google's tools, Google My Business, um, Google Analytics, Google AdWords aren't going to organically, um, that means non-paid SEO, rank you higher. But the more Google tools you use, the better off you're most likely going to be. Um, and again, you don't have to be paying for the majority of them. All right, Victor, um, I had a lot more, but I don't want to just keep overwhelming people. I would like to you know, do more of a Q&A and kind of break this up into another session that we do later. 
where we talk more about diversifying the business through websites and then uh, what you can do with products and artwork to keep yourself busy. Um, but I think that's a good place to uh, kind of have a nice Q&A about uh, SEO and so forth. Yeah, for sure. And uh, just checking again, uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. Can okay. you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine this whole time? No one could have heard you. They're still waiting on you. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks again, everyone, for hanging in there in the beginning. We had some audio issues, but let's jump into the Q&A. Um, type in your questions in the chat. I'll read them out. Zach will answer them for for you. And we, So we're just going to give a little time for you guys to write your questions. Uh, in the meantime, Zach, we did have someone already write in. Uh, not a question. They just say hi. Uh, they're saying, hi, Zach. Great to see you. This is by Roya Saber. Oh, I'm butchering that last name. I apologize, but it's by Roya. <laughs> so, yeah, apologies. I'm going to back away from the last name. <laughs> but, um, yeah. While we're waiting on the uh, actual um, questions and so forth, one thing real quick is at the moment, um, I've greatly decreased my Deco Pro rates. Right now, we're running them four hours at 450, eight hours for 750. If you've seen how quickly I can move in these websites, uh, what I can do in eight hours, I can build your, I can teach you the whole system. I can build your sites. We can build templates. Um, everything I do is through screen sharing conversations, just like this, except they're one on one live. You're you're getting answers in real time from someone who's used the software for ten years and has done every decoration process in house himself. So we can know. Uh, you know, I have the ability to be on the same page with you. And um, I just, I prefer to do everything with my clients. I like to teach the software as much as accomplish uh, my client's objectives. If I do everything and they don't know how I did it, it doesn't do you much good. I want to teach you how to use Deco so you can get the most out of it. Um, another thing that though, I know everyone can't afford to be paying for one-on-one -on -one time and so forth. And we are pretty busy right now. Um, is I started making homepage, uh, a lot of different homepages and, and courses on how to build them. So what I did was if you go to decoexperts.com, you can still see my screen, right, Victor? Uh, yes, you just had a, there it is. Okay. Yep. So we're, we're going to come to courses. Um, and then if you scroll down, um, I have several courses, but if you look at these what we built here are many different homepage layouts. And I'll be honest, I looked at a website and we built, we rebuilt a lot of the different layouts qualities uh, and sense to it. Um, it. What you can do for a hundred dollars is you can learn how to build this to a T by watching my screenshot videos and you can make a really nice layout and learn how to do it all yourself. You're not getting the one-on-one -on -one time, but you can learn how to essentially do anything when it comes to the, the design of the site. Along with the videos uh, themselves, Victor, I also launch a affiliate site for them on my network that has the whole back end here. So if you're rebuilding the page and you have to, oh, I'll click on, that's the widget they he used because I, I sometimes go fast. <laughs> uh, you can look at all of the different settings uh, when I clone a site. So if you're on, you have two screens, you can look at all the settings on one, you rebuild it on yours, and then you can clone that over and over again. You can change anything about it. You're, you're taking advantage of a lot of, you know, you're, and you're gonna learn. So um, that's why I created the courses so um, my clients could, could do that. Lastly, if you sign up for the course and it, it you can't, it, it's too much for you and you end up wanting to get help. Well, if you've already paid $100 and you want four hours, I'm not charging you another $450. I'm only charging you $350. I'm giving you the chance to pretty much try it yourself before you have to hire me, if that makes sense. Okay. All right, Victor, do we have any questions? Yeah, we have a couple. Uh, next question is from Nathan, and the question is, will a recording of the web webinar be provided? And it will. 
uh, a recording of the webinar will be emailed out to everyone who registered next week and the video will also be made available both on our YouTube and on our uh, Facebook so you can also find it there all right so Evan has a question uh, it's kind of a long question here just bear with me a sec he says hi there thanks for this I'm a little confused about what you did with the tabs why were they then uh, why were you then creating what looked like a copy of the tabs which were already there what was that doing so if I'm going to make a when it comes to making these pages I'm talking about making like 50 pages and I don't want to have to redo the content on every page I can just copy a page let's do performance for example and I can take advantage of all of the blank product category listing uh, work we did now why now that I'm on performance I would make performance the default category do you need to do it this way no but if you are on a tablet and your header is getting smaller and smaller if you're on a phone it is a lot easier to change between categories without having to come up to the navigation and go from there so it, it's it's more of a personal preference but like i said you don't have to display categories as tabs you can do it normal and now that we're just on the performance page i'll just do the performance category and it, all my work is still here so absolutely still um does work that way and again if i then went and cloned this and i made the long sleeve well, then it is going to just be uh, one category, and I just have to change the category from there. So it, uh, using the tab functionality is just if you want to. Uh, at the end of the day, you're using the blank product listing. If your customer stumbles upon the page, great. They click on here. They're going to get to uh, the product details page or the designer page, and we have an opportunity to impress Google like we didn't before. All right, uh, we have another question here, uh, Roya. Question is, what's the best way to contact you? Can you also provide the link to purchase a homepage tutorial? And thank you. Yep, yep, so uh, email, I'll just type it right here, Victor. DecoExperts at DecoNetwork.com. So uh, if you email us, um, Tell us what you're looking for, and it's it's pretty easy to just communicate that way. If we need to have a um, quick go-to meeting conversation to provide a custom quote based on what you're looking for, we can do that. Um, outside of also what I didn't put in here, Victor, is uh, for a total of 250, you can actually purchase the layout in two hours with me. And essentially what that allows you to do is you're going to get, um, and that, again, that, that's a different promotion. You can't keep combining all these, but the, the two hours uh, for 250 means you can go at the home page and try to rebuild it yourself if you get stumped or if you build it and then you want to swap out the variables. I mean, we, we probably don't need two hours just for that, but two hours related to anything within the software we can tackle um so yep yeah, i will uh if you just email deco experts at deco network.com um either myself or my wife will get back to you okay all right okay so um looks like the questions have uh slowed down so we're just going to give a couple minutes in case anyone else has some questions um yeah yeah so while we're waiting zach um what are some of the um some of the topics some of the things that they can you know take action now and i know you kind of covered it but just a quick recap um google my business that's completely free that's something people can actually do right now after this webinar they can just go on there they have it already and set that up and start being um um, promoted by Google for local searches is that right yes yes I mean I and and Google 
is is definitely favoring businesses who use it. Um, if you're not using Google, and and Google is by far the the, the most popular um, search engine, um, but Google My Business, it, it's it, yeah, it it is definitely um, everything. And and what I would really also mention is, um, and I'm a big fan of it. Google is really uh, taking into account reviews. Um, there's also even sometimes you can become a Google verified store. Now, I don't think this is really in our situation that we're gonna be doing it that much, but a Google verified store is more if you're promoting uh, speed and uh, you know, you're know you always hitting your own deadlines and, and all of that, it, it takes a lot more. But what I'm getting at is Google is really ranking sites based on what customers are saying. If um, they don't. They don't actually care just about content. You can. Um, you actually bring up a great point. I could make all these pages. I could take the time to do all this meta descriptions and work. But if my Google reviews are awful and everyone's saying that I do a terrible job, um, then yeah, it's not good. And anybody who's ever seen Custom Inks work knows that it's not five star. <laughs> Yeah, yep, and definitely whenever um, a platform such as Google or even social social, social media, um, if they have a tool and you're utilizing it, uh, you best believe they're gonna they're gonna definitely like your account. They're gonna definitely like you because you're engaging with it. You're engaging with with them. Especially, yeah, and especially you know what their most valuable asset is? It's actually YouTube. So if you actually create videos about custom shirts, um, again, a lot of people aren't gonna be necessarily you know, watching them. This one's got 2.4 million views. Um, even if you're just having fun with that, um, if you can make YouTube, it's actually, Victor, I consider it the greatest purchase of all time. <laughs> uh, it was purchased for like two billion dollars, and this has to be worth like a hundred now. I mean, it's the second most visited site behind Google. Um, so uh, yeah, when it comes to uh, you know using Google tools, if you actually have a Google account and you're uploading videos and you're hitting keywords and so forth, and you put it on your site, um, that does a lot. Something we didn't really touch on, and it's kind of complex, is uh, the value of link sharing and, and just backlinks and so forth. It's it's a much bigger conversation, but um, yeah, the more, I, I mean, I like to, Google's the godfather of the internet. If you, if you ever wanna know what the most popular websites are, what is it, alexa.com, Victor? Um, it, it, that's where you can see the, um, which, which websites get the most, I'm sorry, I don't remember what it is, but it, yeah, you, you can actually see which sites get the most traffic and everything, and Google owns like three of the top 10. Wow. All right, we have a question by Kelly. The uh, question is, can I clone a role or column on the homepage and drag it to another page? Yes, you, well, yes and no. So um, when it comes to a row, yes, I can clone a row. I can clone a widget, I cannot clone a column, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you can't though. So let me just come back, let me just come to a home page. Doesn't matter what page I'm on, does not matter. I'm just coming here to come here. Um, let's say, so right now, um, if you want to clone, it, it makes more sense if I have two columns. So let me just make this two columns. So this is two columns. I cannot clone this column. It's not possible. And But what I can do is I can drag a row, and then I can put the column. Look at your rows and, and columns as containers as much as anything, because a lot of times you'll have multiple widgets, like a header, and then maybe you'll have a button underneath it. And if you want to uh, clone them and they're in the same row, well, I can't clone the row. Eventually I'll get this where I want it. 
Can't clone the row, Victor. Can't do it. I can clone. I can't clone the column. I'm sorry. I can clone the row. And then I can move it wherever I want. But at this point, row, um, whatever you want to do, if you want to get it to another page, do what we all do by mistake initially, and that is drag stuff into the footer. And once it's in the footer, it's on every page. So if you drag it in the footer, it's a great way to sneak content to another page. I'm just going to come back to where you were. Oh, that's a nice workaround. That is sneaky. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, but it's, <laughs> um, <laughs> everyone does it by mistake initially. And you bring it out, and it's on this page. There is a little, um, the trick is now getting it out of the footer. I don't mean to put an image. I keep meaning to do color. The trick is now getting it out of the footer, which you need to go to essentially a third page vector where you don't have it anywhere. Because right now, <laughs> it's kind of like pulling from two places. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to go to a random page where I don't have it. And I'm going to delete it. And that's the trick. You just, if you, that last portion can, again, it's a hair ripping out situation. <laughs> if you accidentally put it in the footer and you can't get it out all that. Any other questions? Yes, we have another question by Evan. Question is, I want to release a new design every week. My customer base is more interested in my design products rather than just the blank products. So I want to major on the designs I'm creating. Is there a way to highlight the new designs in search engine? Okay. If we go to the admin and I upload a store design, I click on the design itself. I can go into meta information just like I can a blank or a decorated product. So yes, you want to be going into the design itself and taking the time to write the description, the keywords, and the title. This title is probably the most important part um, of everything. So yes, that that's that's that is it, if you're going to be uploading design, then yeah, that would be it um if i go to the actual site um again what you also could do if you really want to improve now i understand why why you you may not want to just continuously keep building pages and pages and pages but if, if you actually um make a page for that design um you're going to have more chances um but yeah using yeah that that would be that'd be the place to start uh, using an actual page itself is going to help even more from my experience again i'm not trying to be like the president and claim i'm not a doctor and give you advice i'm, <laughs> I'm just giving you marketing advice from my i do have a marketing degree but I'm, I do not run an SEO firm. Um, so you can, um, yeah, it, you might wanna add actual content to the pages themselves. Um, when you click on a design, listing the designs and then making them, um, the customer select the design, then the product it is, it's used a little less often than making a pre-decorated product. Um, but yeah that it, 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 yeah victor i'm not gonna i'm kind of bite my own tongue just right where i said in the admin go to the meta description um yeah that's the first place to start very good okay uh we have another question from uh this one's coming from jason uh question is can i set up shipping method for a specific slash individual item that is cheaper and fits on, and fits into smaller, cheaper shipping methods. And and how how to cope with shipping if the customer orders said special products, but also items which should then jump back to the to standard shipping. Oh my. Um, okay, real quick. When I hit my last thing, also the categories themselves can have meta. Um, but 
as far as shipping methods go, um, I'm actually, my account is around 10 years old that we're on right now. So if I come into settings and shipping, you probably see the shipping price levels and it, it's no longer even the case on new accounts. Um, so shipping methods, you're, um, you typically, you're gonna have a shipping method that you, you offer and you can choose, if you make it from scratch, so I have like this free one, you can designate which sites it's available to and which locations it can go to. Making, deciding which products can use it is not, I, I get it, um, but I also, it, it creates a bigger problem for your customers as well. So within your different product groups and then the products themselves, uh, we used to have, so shipping and production, I mean, price levels used to exist, but that no longer is even the case. There's not really, you, you can't say this group uses, this product uses this pro, uh, shipping method and this one uses that. Um, I, I, at least I, I've never seen that ability. I mean, I totally understand why, but before you know it, you're gonna make it harder on your customer. They need to be able to add things to their cart and, and, and check out. Um, I, Victor, if you repeat some of that, that question, um, I'm not sure I really hit it, but you, you from, I, I have price levels that don't exist. I can, you know, have packaging and, and choose how a lot of that goes. But at the end of the day, we are either going to calculate the price based on the total weight or the amount of pieces. Um, let me just copy this over to another one. Um, we, can, we can do it by piece, by weight, by value. And you can control the weight of the item, obviously, and the shipping. Uh, the value is within the price and the quantity is how many units. Um, payment methods, I'm sorry, shipping methods. So let me edit this. So anytime, you, if you create one from scratch yourself, um, you can come into, I'm sorry, this. Oh. Okay. For some uh, reason that one, that one uh, I have I have set a little different. I couldn't control the price breakdowns like I can here because I had it free. So the price breakdowns can again either be by value, quantity, weight. Uh, you can have a handling fee, um, but you're, you're yeah, I, Victor. I don't think you. I think I kind of answered that, but didn't. Uh, um, he, he, Jason did write some more information. So he's he's saying so at the moment, so far it's set up as a new shipping method at X weight where X is the weight of the unique product. And if the total shipping is more than, more or not equal to X weight, it then moves to the standard shipping, which I believe is what you were showing just now. You set the parameters and based on the, the not just the individual um, product, but the, the well, sum of all the products, it'll automatically, um, shift what shipping methods are available uh unless we um if we're going by weight uh actually not victor from what i from what i know mm -hmm. as long as this says infinity i can't say hey this is cut off um essentially i don't i don't know of a way to say that the max price for or the max weight for a process, um, I can require minimum. This minimum has weight limit. Oh, yeah. This is new. Gosh, you see, this is the problem when you use software for ten years. Something's not possible for <laughs> nine and a half, and then it becomes available, and you become a liar. So yeah, you can set a maximum weight now. It used to not be possible. So let's say we have a hundred pounds. Um, then yes, and to your point, this is an order. Whatever's at the top is listed first. Um, the reason I have first class before priority is because this is naturally doing it. First class goes up to one pound. 
priority is everything after one pound. So if it's if my order's over a pound, this goes away. This is the default option. Yeah, and it looks like both you and Jason, um, who asked the question, are, are, this is the first time you both see the new feature. You said, oh, he didn't use that. That's new. <laughs> yeah, see, I knew that was new. I was like, wait, yeah. what the heck? And I'm not on a, I don't think I'm even on beta right now with this. So yeah, you, it, and again, that's the, <laughs> there's a lot with the software that's always evolving and it's, um, um, I always suggest that everyone checks out the release notes. You're typically one of the ones who releases them, Victor. Um, they're, they're great to uh, access, but even keeping up with them, it, it's often hard to <laughs> know all the different updates Deco implements. There's often, they're not often all in there as well because so many updates, you, you can't even share them all. Yeah, there's quite a lot of updates uh, on each in each new release, and we typically cover like the big ones, like brand new feature, like like you know. But a feature like this, it, it'll typically make it into the release notes, but we wouldn't make like a dedicated video saying yeah. we just introduced this new parameter on this widget that was already there for this very specific scenario. So yeah, like you mentioned, we do have the release notes where it goes into detail those small details. And then our video release notes, they'll usually focus on like the big, the big introductions of some, some big features. Yeah. And I, you know, this is actually interesting. Um, Victor, I, I kind of forgot about this, but I kind of remembered. Oh no, never mind. I already talked, talked about it again. Product shipping methods can be set at a site level or a group level. Um, but you can't have multiple methods. The, the customer at the end of the day is going to choose from one of them that is available um, that's within our parameters. They are not going to choose first class for some of these and this for some of those. You know, we're not best buy. We can't split all these shipments and do all of that. That's not how we work. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Jason said, yep, he was using the infinity parameter just like just like you had it. Um, Oh, and he apologized if it was confusing. Not confusing at all. Um, I'm pretty sure a ton of people are, are trying to work that same scenario out. It wasn't possible. I, I can tell you that yeah. in, within the last year. So for nine years, my brain told me it wasn't. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, so we don't have any new questions coming through. We'll just give it a couple minutes just in case anyone else has a few questions they want to ask. Um, well, yeah, um, with that said, Zach, um, other tips that somebody might be able to uh, to act on now after after listening to this webinar. Uh, yeah. The first one you mentioned was Google My Business. That's something everyone can do and it's completely free. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, even outside of the, the main ways you're going to get traffic typically are either through a search engine, social media, email. Um, and, and to touch a little bit on those other tools within the marketing, actually, let's, let's go to your website within your website. It, it, it's not very obvious to everybody, but let me select one. Um, you are, when you use the newsletter tool on your site, so if we're down here and I have this newsletter, customers can sign up. And if I come into the marketing and sales tools, uh, again, every site has this, you can export the newsletter addresses and we can also integrate with MailChimp. So as you're collecting an email database, you can then use MailChimp to push out um, newsletters or email promotions to your clients, uh, which is definitely a good idea. And again, Deco is allowing us to uh, integrate here uh, with them with the marketing tools for MailChimp. Uh, Zoho CRM, uh, if you are co continuously keeping that CRM, customer relationship management, okay? Um, you wanna keep in touch with your customers and maximize the relationship's potential. So, the thing about Google or um, a customer relationship management tool, one of the things it does is it organizes your leads that you're trying to close and keeps 
you in contact with your current clients. In my opinion, and it might be kind of a, a wrong definition, but Deco Networks Business Hub, the customer and company section, is a light customer relationship management system. What it doesn't do, Zoho CRM does, okay? So what Zoho does is someone's a lead, we wanna keep information about them before we've actually, they become an actual customer and we've started building that relationship with them and we're, we're working with them, most likely a business. Um, so they're a lead. Once we're in the business of selling custom products and services, that's a service. Uh, customers come to us when they need our product and service. They, they aren't necessarily retailing custom products. They have to have a demand for it. So the customer's uh, portion, because we keep track of every quote, order, invoice, design, layout, everything you can imagine, and why I really think so is because your customer come up here and log in and they can view virtually everything we have here. Um, the amount of information that Deco is organizing um, here, and, and again, every design, layout, making it reorders, everything so easy, um, and also easy for the customer to come to the website and do it themselves. Um, I consider Business Hub to be a light customer relationship management system. And what it doesn't do is it doesn't organize leads before their customer. Zoho can do that. And then once you have them as a customer, sometimes you want to remind yourself to contact them. When do I send out, you know, and to who, the MailChimp emails? Zoho is going to organize your uh, contact strategy kind of and, and how you continuously manage that relationship. Um, so that's email. Uh, the other one, Victor, if if social media um, is definitely something else to, to play around with, um, you know, again, we're selling custom products. What I'd like to talk about in a future webinar is diversifying your business with more retail. And that's where Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, those really have a different market. When I have a finished product and I'm trying to push that design that or product, it, it, it has a particular niche that we're targeting. When I am pushing custom decoration products and services, that's virtually anybody. You have to be in the market for it. And, and I have to catch your eye. If I show, if I put together a great design, well, you could not be in the market for a t-shirt, but if you like it enough, I can sell it to you. And it's the price point is so low, it's it's totally possible. So um, if you're a custom decoration business, I would definitely I have a Facebook page. I, I would have a Facebook page. And something that you could be doing right now is you can be, do not uh, post 10 things a day to your customers and think that you're not going to annoy them. You will annoy them. What you can do with Facebook, and you, you used to have to pay for these types of services using other software, but you can schedule all of your Facebook posts through Facebook. You, you can schedule months worth of posts. So you can kind of automatically create your content for the future when you come back to being busier after the world comes to some normalcy. Um, so I would schedule posts, and even with Facebook, you can actually have them push. Gosh, I don't know if this is still true. You used to be able to push them to Twitter. I, I don't know if it's still true. And because they bought Instagram, you can kind of push them with Instagram as well. Or by, I don't think that's really true unless it's an image. Um, but Instagram is where you would sell, again, more of a retail product and not so much a custom. Outside of Facebook, I mean, if you're big, maybe Twitter. But again, it's it's hard. It's again, we're custom decoration products and services. I have YouTube. Uh, YouTube's essentially Google's main social media tool or uh, outside of Google My Business at this point. Um, if you create any video content that's relevant, um, it can have some value. I mean, it, it, it seems kind of dumb, but uh, make Google happy. Use their stuff. Use YouTube. Create an account. Link it to your site. Put it on your uh, put videos on your site. Kit keywords in the actual YouTube descriptions. And, and again, it's it's content they're crawling. Um, so yeah, uh, use it all. Email, social media, um, 
you know, word of mouth and all of that, you're, you, you can't really do anything at the moment with it, but um, you can be working on long-term assets that are not just good for right now. You will, you could take advantage of them for years um, because of the hard work. Awesome. I'm just replying here to Jason. He had a question. I'm actually sending Jason a YouTube uh, a link to one of the past webinars that you did. Um, his question was if you had any tips or advice on how to optimize website for conversion. Um, there's a lot of material to be covered with, with that question. I just sent him a, a link to that webinar because uh, that was covered in pretty good detail. Um, but just a quick overview, any, any, any tips, anything that can, um, that can streamline the website uh, for conversion? For convert, well, um, I, I, as far as conversion uh, goes with customers, I would say less is more nowadays. Um, the simpler you can keep it, the better. Uh, but a lot of it also comes down to your target market. Um, you have B2B and you have B2C. And when I mean B to B, so B to B is business to business. You're a business, you're selling to another business. Realize organizations, schools, those are businesses. Well, kind of. They, they, they're a little bit of different of a market themselves. But then you have B to C, your consumers, which is just anybody off the street who's looking for something. If my business revolves around DTG or some other one-off decoration processes, I'm probably going to be focusing on B to C. If um, I'm a screen printer and embroiderer and I'm doing I, my business revolves around bulk, I'm probably working with more businesses and some consumers. But to make your website convert, one, you have to identify your target market and make sure you are hitting that target. If you try to build a site for everyone, it will not be as successful if you target a specific, if you're again, you're making it for a business uh, or for consumers. Uh, but less is more when it comes to the page. Uh, at the end of the day with Deco's tools, if I'm running a custom decoration shop, I'm gonna use the products page and that's gonna be my products page. Um, I would have a, and I'm kind of surprised Deco doesn't already have this as a default page, but I get it because we don't have a tool for it. If I'm gonna make content, I would have a services page. And outside of products, my services is where it actually would talk about screen printing and so forth. Um, because if I'm targeting businesses, businesses are actually a little interested in the processes and they've purchased this stuff before a lot of the times, and they know the difference. Some businesses who buy a lot of stuff, they know the difference when they see water-based screen printing, some it catches their eye for some of them and not saying everybody but um and businesses often want to be educated a little bit if they're trying to establish a relationship with you um realize a school can buy a ton of product in a given year if your site if they if the first thing they do right now guess what businesses can't meet with someone in person we could have a uh over you know the phone or uh facetime uh meeting but a lot of businesses, they're just going to be Googling. They're going to find your site and they're going to interpret how you treat your entire business based on the way you treat your website. We are human. We come to a lot of conclusions and uh, we make a lot of inferences and assumptions based on first impressions. If my first impression when I get to your site is that it's half built, it's not going to you know, give me a lot of confidence that you're going to get the job done. So um, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, but kind of back to your point, um, businesses, they are going to heavily access your website using a desktop computer. Um, that's not to say they're not going to use tablets and phones, but they're going to be the desktop users and they're going to have more room to wiggle around as well. But that still doesn't mean they want more pages. So I have products, I have services, I would have about, I would have contact, and I would have a quote page. 
as far as that, I would not have really much more at all in my header. Less is more. Having a ton of stuff in your header um, often becomes overwhelming. Make it simple as possible. The fewer the clicks, the better your customer will have. Um, so again, products, go find the right product. Services, learn about how I actually decorate the products. Designer, I would not have the design tool on the in the uh, header because the customer must select a product before they actually select they start designing it. It just you got to put the horse before the carriage. And, and then about contact request quote. I mean, it's very simple. They know they can find the main page they need to access and then go from there. But again, if you're working with consumers as well, they're going to be on a lot of tablets and phones. And the fewer pages there are, the easier it is to for them to get to from point A to point B. Um, something else I have learned, um, I'm not saying this is 100% true, but the design tool itself is not used by a lot of businesses. It has nothing to do with Deco's designer. Um, in general, businesses do not use design tools. Businesses ask for quotes, purchase orders, and they are used to getting catered to. Because if you won't cater to them, somebody else will. So what a business is going to do is they're going to come onto your site and they're going to go, I'm going to go into preview mode. They're going to find a product and they might choose some, um, they might add some quantity. They might even add uh, a piece of artwork if you allow them to just attach some. But at the end of the day, what they're going to do is they're going to find a product, they're going to grab a link, they're going to email you and say, can you quote me for this product with this quantity, and they're going to attach a piece of artwork. They are not going to take the time to come here and do that, because what they're going to do is they're going to copy that email, they're going to send it to your competitor, except they're going to take out this, and they're going to, or they're going to actually give you the link to the damn sorry, the, the other competitor, so you can reference it. It's like, can you beat it? Um, they want, you know, so again, businesses, don't expect them to check out. And, and another thing is businesses aren't going to be making a purchase typically for a $20 one-off shirt. They're typically going to be purchasing hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. It has to be quoted and so forth. So they can request quote. What a beautiful thing is if I request a quote here, it actually does take me to um, the page and I've already selected the product and any quantity and everything. This works great. This is this will heavily be used by businesses. Um, but if you're working with a lot of businesses, you're gonna do a lot of the quoting process in Business Hub. And then um, as you build a relationship, they might be able to understand how to place that order through the site more. Remember, we are not selling a retail product we are selling something custom it is in it is not apples and oranges i mean it is a, apples and vegetables it is completely different when you have to make a product and design it uh like we do um so your businesses will revolve around logging in and approving quotes and all of that um so don't always judge your website based on how many transactions it immediately completes that doesn't mean it, it it's not getting the job done um, but to sum it up, one, less is more. Um, and just and when I say less is more, you know I built the blog page and I built all these other product pages. I just don't have them being obviously distracting my customers. Your home page is by far the most important page. It's often considered your landing page. And before I start scrolling down the page, it's called above the fold. And right now I have these product categories here. On your homepage, you need a call to action to tell your customer what the heck your business is all about and then make it as quick and easy as possible to find a product to either get a quote or purchase. Don't throw text and videos and text and videos throughout this entire thing. No one cares about that. At the end of the day, 
The only thing that makes money is products. Talking about them doesn't. You, it, it'll drive traffic, but again, I don't want to make that obvious to my customer. I want to make that for Google. Hopefully that makes sense and helps answer the question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when it comes to traffic, uh, Google, Google is king, right? We want to make Google happy. Well, but again, Victor, a lot of this, though, came down to what Deco has done as well. Because mm -hmm. like I showed you, if I can go in here and it is literally page slash T-shirts slash, well, just like that, um, that's a really clean URL, too. Um, you know, years ago, this would be kind of something not so sexy. But little things like this, uh, page, the T-shirts, that, that's huge. And Victor, actually, something we have not touched today that is really big, really big, is your site needs to be secure. If you, if your site does not have that SSL certificate a part of it, it's not as secure. Now, here's a situation where I'm actually using a store domain. Um, it's a little off topic, but again, if you're on the Premier Enterprise plan, you can uh, use, you can. Any domain you own, you can make available to become the default. So when I when a customer signs up for a site, it's dot whatever one of these sites, um, and that's it. I don't have dot deco dash apparel as the default. If you are using a default domain and you launch a new site, so if I go to add store, I don't care which site, which thing. If I use a custom domain, Victor, I don't know if you know this. This is pretty important. Um, if I use one of the custom domains, I cannot assign it an SSL certificate on your site. Huh. So it's a great way to white label your site and get dot decode out of there, but it is not possible to add the SSL certificate technically. Okay. So I'll show you how to do it, Victor. You actually never want to actually select that domain name when you're signing up for the site. Oh, come on. No, no, no. I think I might have gotten kicked out. Too many things running at once. Okay. Um, you absolutely, you actually still can get it in there though, Victor. It's just, it's a little tricky. So um, if you come back to your domain, if you're using a, um, a custom suffix domain like this, um, which a lot of us are, it doesn't have this SSL. That's a problem. Google is not, they're gonna be warning people like it's the end of the world and it's kind of crazy. So Victor, what you want to do is actually use a typical um, web, a deco site. So like deco dot de or suffix domain. Uh -huh. And what I can do instead is I'm just going to add this. What it was, was a dot affiliate web stores. So dot affiliate web stores dot com. And then I can add it. And then I can add the SSL um, certificate to it. So right here, I'm going to make the primary and add the SSL certificate. So that's not, I'll tell you what, when you're designing a site, there's nothing that actually is telling, popping up and giving you a big warning. Hey, this thing is, doesn't have SSL certificates everywhere it needs. But when your customer goes to access the site and the first thing they see is, hey, this isn't secure, that's a big problem. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I think that's all of the questions right there. Um, well, that was a pretty good Q&A. Yep. All right. All right, Victor, we'll have to do this again soon. Yeah, so if once more, if somebody wants to reach you directly, uh, receive a quote for Deco Pro services or anything like that, where can they reach you? It'd be decoexperts at deconetwork.com. All right. All right. Thanks, if everybody. If you happen to email uh, Deco, Victor will get you to me. Yep, that too. All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining us, and thank you very much for all the questions. We will see you on the next webinar.
Thanks, Victor.